Hello everyone, in this video we'll be making pickup items for our player. We're going to have three items that our player can pick up, that being health, armor, and ammo. And we'll have variations of each, and we'll try to do it all with one pickup script and some slot modifications to our current scripts. We'll then get into adding some graphics and a billboard effect. In this video we'll use some assets that I threw together just for this project, and they're free for you to use also. The link's in the description. So let's get to it. Let us start by setting up one pickup. In the hierarchy, we're going to create a new empty game object and we'll name it Autumn Pickup for now. Reset is transformed so it's here at the same spot as our player. It's good practice to separate out your logic and graphics, so on the Autumn Pickup, we're going to add a new 3D object as a child and this will be our visuals for the time being. Let's select the whole object and just drag it up even with the ground and in front of the player so we can see it. We'll select the visual again and let's just remove the collider. The visual is only a visual and any collision detection going on will be on our root item pickup object. So now let's just select it and we'll add a component and it'll be a box collider. Let's make it a bit larger than the visual. So we'll say 2 on the X, 2 on the Y, and 2 on the Z. And since it's a trigger volume and we don't want any actual collision stopping us, we'll tick this to is trigger. So now our player can enter the trigger, so let's add a script and set up some detection. Let's add a new component to our pickup, and it'll be a script that we name item pickup, and press enter twice, or click create and add, and let's move it into the scripts folder, and then we'll double click it to open it in Visual Studio. To detect the player, we want to go beneath this update and say void on trigger enter, and this takes in a collider called other and then now we'll use that to see if the player has triggered it by saying if other dot compare tag and we'll use the tag player and for this to work make sure your player is still correctly tagged as player so starting simple if other is player then we want to destroy the game object now we can do a quick save and test in unity Yep, it appears to be working. So as I mentioned before, we're going to use this script for our three main types of pickups. Up at the top, I'm going to declare three public bulls. They're going to be is health, is armor, and is ammo. And lastly, we'll declare a public int, and we're just going to call this amount. Now we can use this script on multiple pickups, and we can assign what type and value here in the inspector. Now inside the if statement that checks for our player, we'll add three more to check what type of pickup we have. And we'll be using if is health, if is armor, and if is ammo. We'll deal with our health pickup first. If we navigate to our player and open the player health script, you'll see we have what we need right here. We have our health variable and also we have our armor variable. But also notice their protection level is private. So to modify these, we'll do it through a function that we call from the pickup script. We can scroll down here to the bottom and collapse the damage player function, and beneath it we'll write out this new function. We'll say public void give health and have it take in an int that we'll call amount. And let's also tend to the armor by duplicating this function, and instead we're just going to call this one give armor. Since these are public, we can now call them from within the pickup script, but first we need to grab the player health component. We can do that by saying our other dot get component, and we want player health. And now we can access the function with dot give health. And for the amount, we'll pass in our pickup amount, and that's this guy here. And we can copy and paste this into our if is armor, and instead we'll call the give armor function. Now that should call one function or the other depending on the pickup type. But let's go back into the player health script and make these actually do something. In the give health function we'll just say health plus equals amount for now. And the same for armor, only armor plus equals amount instead. And in case our pickups increase our health over our max health allowed then we'll set our health back to our max health. And we'll do the same for armor. So now we can save and jump into Unity for a quick test. 
I'm going to set this pickup to be health and the amount we'll use 30 to test and I'll duplicate it a couple of times. So now we can select our player and go down to our player health script and then the inspector will set this to debug so we can take a peek. I'll hit play and then I'm going to hit our right shift that damages our player a couple of times. So now you can see their health is down to 60 so we go over our first pickup and it goes to 90. So we go to our second pickup and it goes to 100 so it can't go over 100 that's good but now when we go to our last pickup it stays at 100 but the pickup disappears so if we're at 100 we don't want this pickup to be destroyed I'm gonna set this debug to normal mode and then we'll jump back in our scripts so in our pickup script we're going to remove this destroy game object and instead we're gonna have our player health determine whether or not the pickup gets destroyed so in here, instead of the amount being added every time this function is called, we want to check if we even need it. So we can say if our health is less than max health, then we want to add our pickup amount to our health. Then we know if we added the health, then we need to destroy the pickup. But to destroy it from here, we need a reference to it. So where we pass in the amount, we'll also pass in a game object. We'll call it pickup, and then down here, we'll just say destroy the pickup. If we go back into our pickup script now, you'll notice that it's complaining because this give health call is now expecting a game object. So next to our amount, we'll just type game object. And that's whatever object that this script is attached to. So back in our player health, we'll do the same process for the give armor function. We'll say if armor is less than max armor, then we want our armor plus equal to our amount. And then we want to also destroy a pickup. And then up here next to our amount, we'll pass in a game object called pickup. And once more inside of our pickup script, we'll pass in our game object. And just to be a little more clear, we'll say these are this dot game object. So now if we save all of our scripts and go into Unity and play test, we'll make the same scenarios before. And you'll see that the third pickup no longer disappears because we can't use it. And if I make an armor pickup real quick, you'll see that I can't actually pick it up until I damage the player first. But that reminds me, we don't want our player to start with any armor. So in our player health script, let's scroll up to our start function and remove this line where it says set armor to max armor. Now we can save and start on our ammo pickup. So for ammo, it's similar to this get component call, but for our player health, it's on the root. For this, we'll be needing our gun script, and as you can see, it's a child of our player. So here we'll say other dot, and we're looking for get component and children. And the component we want is gun, and we'll call a similar function to these others, but this one we'll name give ammo. And it's also going to take an amount, and it's going to pass in this game object. Now let's create this function in our gun script. So we'll navigate to our player, and the gun game object and double click our gun script to open it up. So we already have a fire rate and some damage variables, but let's add an ammo variable. Beneath the next time to fire, we want a public int max ammo and a private int called ammo. Next, we want to move to our update and in our if condition, we need to add in and our ammo is greater than zero. So then you can fire if we have ammo. And then down inside of our fire, at the very end, we'll deduct our ammo by saying ammo minus minus. And this will subtract one ammo. Now we can collapse this fire method and write our new function down below it. And since we know how this is structured now, we can just write it all out. We'll say public void, and we're going to say give ammo. And then it's going to be int amount, game object, pickup. And then we're going to say if ammo is less than max ammo, ammo plus equal amount. And then we're going to destroy pickup. And then we're going to say if ammo is greater than our max ammo, then we need to set ammo equals max ammo. So if we save that and go check our pickup script, all of our functions are happy. So we can go into Unity and we're going to finish off the system by setting our max ammo and our gun script. And I'll just use 100 here. A 
We'll start with just one pickup and we'll make sure that all the variables are zeroed out. Now let's create a new folder inside of our project window and we're going to call it sprites. And I'm going to drag my sprites in and these are the ones from the link in the description but feel free to use your own. After I get them in here, I'm going to control click and select all of them. In the inspector, I'm going to set the texture type to sprite, 2D, and UI. And scroll down and click apply to change them all. So on that first pickup we made, let's delete the visual we have now. And instead we'll add a 3D quad. We'll name this visual and remove its collider as we did the cubes. And we'll scale it up a bit, maybe two on the X and two on the Y. And now it kind of matches up with our trigger volume. Let's grab it and pull it out of the ground a little bit. Now that's the backbone of all of our prefabs. So let's duplicate this six times or however many sprites you're using. I agree this feels janky, but I've had trouble with quads and swapping materials before. So each sprite's going to get its own blank quad. So once you have all of these and they're spread out a bit, we're going to expand them all so we can see the visual object. Then we'll just select the first quad visual. And for this one, I'm going to use the big med kit. So I'm just going to drag this on. And then here in the material, I'm going to change the shader to sprite and default. Then you pretty much just rinse and repeat with all of your sprites. So on the smaller med kit, the scale is just a little too big, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to 1 and 1. And then I also ended up doing that on the small armor and both of the ammo pickups. So now we got some nice retro looking pickups, but now let's use billboarding textures to make it more Doom-like. So we're going to select one of our visual quads, it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to add a component and we're going to call it Sprite Rotator. And then we'll just double click it and open it up. Making a basic billboard script is really easy. In our update, we're going to take this transform and say dot look at, and this is a built-in Unity function that takes in a transform. We'll name ours the same as theirs with target. And then at the top, we'll declare a private transform, name target. And then in the start, we'll assign the target by finding our player's transform by using find object of type. And then we'll look for player move, since we know that's on our player. And then we'll say dot transform. And that's pretty much it. You can save and go back into Unity. Now we can apply it to all the other ones. So we can hold control and we'll select all the other visuals and then we'll just hit add component and then add our new sprite rotator. So at this point in the video I realized that the pickups that I was working on was missing the pickup script. So I'm just going to select all the pickups and I'm going to add the pickup script to it. Now we can finally turn these into prefabs, and doing so is a bit grindy, but pretty simple. We'll select our first one here, and what we need to do is name it. We'll name this one Big Meg Kit, and then we'll tick what kind of pickup it is, and then I want this one set as 50. After that, it's pretty much copy and paste. The small Meg Kit, I used 10. For the big armor, I used Is Armor and 25. And then for the small armor, I used 5. The big ammo is ammo and it's set to 10 and the small ammo I have set to 5. Now that they're sorted out we can go down in our project window and we're going to move our sprite rotator into the scripts folder and we're going to go into the prefab folder and we're going to create a new one called pickups. Now let's use control click to select all of our prefabs here and then in the inspector we're going to go and we're going to reset the position and then we'll drag each one into our prefab folder and that will make them prefabs and once it's a prefab you can delete it out of the scene and then you'll see that we're able to just grab any pickup we want and just slap it anywhere we want in our game and they're already functioning and they look great 
Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you stay tuned to catch more of the series. Spawn Camp out.